Number 7. The Gospel of Truth In 1945, an unbelievable discovery was made in Nag Hammadi, Egypt. Thirteen ancient books of the Bible were uncovered. It took a while for experts to translate the books, but they were completed in the 1970s. The collection is now known as the Nag Hammadi Library, and it contains some of the strangest biblical scripts ever written. Researchers believe they were made by the Gnostics, an early sect of Christianity that was deemed heretical. They taught their own kind of Christianity, which was often bizarre. The Gnostics believed they had special magical knowledge and that their cosmic wisdom was the only way to salvation. They held their own special writings as scripture, just as important as the work of the normal Bible. However, the church said the Gnostic texts were blasphemous. One of the books that was found in 1945 was the Gospel of Truth. According to this book, Christ came to earth to save humanity from ignorance rather than from sin. The very first line of the book says, the gospel of truth is joy to those who have received from the Father of Truth the gift of knowing. This basically means joy comes from the cosmic knowledge of the Gnostics. The contents of the book are fairly simple. There's a passage that's almost identical to Matthew 12, 9-14, in which Jesus Christ heals the man with the withered hand. Only the book places a Gnostic spin on the passage. It says Jesus saved the life of the sheep that fell into the pit, so that you might understand what the Sabbath truly is. And it ends off by saying, you who possesses full understanding. Once again, this is alluding to the esoteric knowledge the Gnostics believed they held. But what exactly was the knowledge the Gnostics thought they possessed, and nobody else did? Well, that's a little trickier to explain. The whole point was that only the Gnostics understood the truth of the world and of God. Many of the lessons in the Gospel of Truth are almost impossible to make sense of. Unlike the New Testament that gives eyewitness accounts of Jesus Christ and explains his teachings, this Gospel is all mystical and vague. For example, the Gospel of Truth says Jesus was a teacher that was so advanced in wisdom that he confounded the other scribes. But again, they don't give specifics into that supposed wisdom. It also says that Jesus was sent from God to remove the ignorance from humans who were corrupted by the creation of the world. The Gnostics believed the physical world was an abomination and that people needed to return to the mythical realm where God lives in heaven. The book also explains that Jesus Christ tried to share his knowledge with the world, but nobody understood him. So they nailed him to a cross and killed him. And now for number six, but first it's shout out time. I wanted to give a big thank you to Jared Quinney and Kurt C for supporting this channel. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already for more videos about amazing discoveries or dinosaurs or forbidden books of the Bible. Number 6. Questions of Bartholomew The Questions of Bartholomew survives as a withered text in Greek, Latin, and Slavonic. Each copy of the ancient manuscript varies a little bit with different wording, but the framework is the same. The forbidden biblical text is a dialogue between Jesus and the apostles, triggered by some extremely bizarre questions asked by Bartholomew. Judging by how many texts survived the ancient world, scholars think the book was extremely popular. People would have been reading it all over Europe. Scholars also say the reason it may have been so popular was because of how outrageous the book is. For example, there's one line in the book that suggests Adam and Eve were kicked out of the Garden of Eden because Eve got physical with Satan. Many experts have compared the questions of Bartholomew to the even more outrageous Book of Enoch. The Book of Enoch is the text that goes into deep details about the Nephilim, the fallen angels, and the reason behind the Great Flood. Questions of Bartholomew tries to explain the seemingly supernatural features of Christianity. In typical human fashion, though, it explains things like you might expect from a modern tabloid. Jesus Christ briefly has a journey into hell in the book. He describes in his own words what it's like moving through the realm of demons. When the apostles ask to see hell, Jesus has a group of angels roll up the earth. They do this so the apostles can gaze down into the abyss of hell and see with their own eyes. Afterward, the earth is rolled back into place. This kind of imagery would have been extremely exciting to people living in the early days of Christianity. When Bartholomew asks to see Satan, a choir of angels drag him from the depths of hell in chains. Satan is so hideous that the sight of him kills all the apostles instantly. Jesus then resurrects his apostles and allows Bartholomew to take control of Satan. Then things get really off the rails as Bartholomew and Satan fall into a deep discussion about esoteric subjects. 
things like why he's the enemy of God and what the hierarchy of angels is. Number 5. The Gospel of the Ebionites The Gospel of the Ebionites was written sometime around the end of the 4th century AD. Nobody knows what the original title of the book was, only that it was a gospel used by the group of Jewish Christians called the Ebionites. The book is a combination of the Gospels of Luke, Matthew, and Mark, but with certain things left out. For example, the book doesn't mention the infancy narrative at all. It says Jesus Christ and John the Baptist were vegetarians. It also says Jesus decreed that nobody shall participate in any kind of sacrifice anymore. The book is extremely close to being a Jewish version of the New Testament. It has all the trademarks of the New Testament, only the stories are tweaked to fit with the Jewish narrative. But what would the purpose of such a book be 1700 years ago? To understand why a Jewish version of the New Testament would be important, you need to understand the relationship between Jesus and the Jews. In the original Christian church, Jesus was viewed as an incarnation of God. He wasn't a man, he wasn't a deity himself. Jesus Christ was God on earth. He wasn't even really God's son, he was God himself in human form on the planet. The Jewish people weren't big fans of this idea though, and neither were the Ebionites. They were Jewish but also wanted to celebrate Christ, whom they viewed as a mortal human being. They thought Jesus was chosen by God to be a prophet, so they made him into a holy man who followed all the ordinary rules of Judaism. He obeyed the dietary regulations and all the religious laws. This made the Ebionites a truly bizarre fringe group from between the 1st and 5th centuries AD. They weren't quite Gnostic because they still believed in most of the Christian narrative, but they weren't Christian because they didn't believe Christ to be an incarnation of God. However, they also weren't Jews. They were in a weird position between all these other main religions. Many modern scholars think the Ebionites may have been more faithful to the real teachings of Jesus Christ than the standard Christians. They called themselves the poor ones because they each took a vow of poverty. They believed in what Jesus said about the kingdom of God being already on earth. They lived the way Jesus taught in small communal societies, and their gospel is a testament of how they lived before vanishing 1500 years ago. Number 4. The Gospel of Judas The Gospel of Judas was lost for almost 1700 years. The only surviving copy of this controversial text was found hidden in Egypt in the 1970s. Biblical scholars called it the most significant archaeological discovery in almost a century, and the only surviving copy is in the form of a codex which was written around the 3rd century AD. It was penned in Coptic, the typical script of Christian Egypt at the time, but the surviving text is likely just a copy of a much earlier text that's written in Greek, written at some point in the 2nd century AD. The reason it's such a controversial book is that it seems to go against the Gospels of the New Testament. In Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Judas Iscariot is a traitor. He's the one who sold out Jesus to the Romans to be crucified. However, Rodolphe Kasser, a former professor from the University of Geneva, said the version of Judas in his gospel is wildly different. And this is coming from one of the greatest Coptic scholars in the world. It was Rodolphe, funded by the National Geographic Society, who worked hard to piece together the ancient text and translate it. In the New Testament, Judas betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. He gave him a kiss in front of Roman soldiers to identify him as the man disrupting the Roman Empire. But what a lot of people who never read the Bible don't know is that Judas felt extremely guilty after he did this. He returned the 30 pieces of silver, and he was utterly distraught with himself. Then he sent himself to hell. In the Gospel of Judas, Judas is described as one of Jesus' closest friends. Judas was the only one who understood Christ's true message, which gave him special status among the disciples. The book goes on to say that Jesus Christ was looking for somebody to free him from his human body, so he chose Judas to betray him on purpose so that the Romans would kill him. There's a line in the book that says Jesus would rather be liberated by a friend than by an enemy. But what does all of this really mean? To put it simply, Judas may not have betrayed Jesus at all. If this gospel is to be believed, Judas was Jesus' best friend. Judas sold him out to the Romans only because Jesus asked him to. The biggest issue right now is that nobody knows who wrote the gospel. It's obviously not part of the Bible, but could it be a real version of events? Unfortunately, nobody can say for certain. 
But what do you think? Could the church have twisted the tale of Judas in order to create an antagonist within Jesus Christ's inner circle? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And while you're at it, subscribe to the channel. Now on to number three. Number three, the Acts of Paul. The Acts of Paul is one of the earliest forbidden biblical books ever written. The book claims that it was written by Jesus Christ's apostle, Paul. The earliest date archaeologists can place the book is about 100 AD, making it entirely plausible that Paul really did write the book. Almost immediately after it was published, it was deemed heretical by the church. The main reason the church didn't like the Acts of Paul was that it suggests women should be allowed to preach and baptize. In other words, a book written by Jesus Christ's own apostle was deemed heretical because he encouraged women to be an important part of the Christian church. That's how corrupt the church was from the beginning. They'd label the apostles, Jesus Christ's own followers during his life, as heretics. They'd really deem anything heretical as long as it meant they could discriminate against women. There isn't any way to confirm that the text was written by Paul. Some scholars have suggested the book was written by Paul's followers in Asia Minor following his missionary work there. The book talks about Paul's final days in Rome. It describes how he resurrected a young man, then it ends with his beheading. And the book says that when Paul had his head chopped off, milk squirted from his neck instead of blood. Number 2. The Protovangelium of James The infancy Gospel of James, also called the Protovangelium of James, exists within about 130 ancient manuscripts. That was how popular this book was in medieval days. Most copies were printed starting around the 10th century, but the oldest one dates back to the 3rd century and is kept in Geneva's Bodma Library in Switzerland. This book is particularly fascinating because it takes place prior to the New Testament. The book takes a look at the story of the Virgin Mary's own birth. It's like a prequel going way back in time to describe the childhood and life of Jesus' mother. It goes into great detail, too. The book takes its readers through Mary as she becomes a woman, and once she's of age, she's not allowed at the temple anymore. The priests in her town then give her to a carpenter named Joseph. The two are supposed to marry, but Joseph refuses to do so. Then, when Mary becomes pregnant with the Son of God, she and Joseph are tested by a priest to see if they were getting busy out of wedlock. The last two chapters of the book focus on Jesus Christ's birth. It goes through Jesus being hidden from King Herod in a feeding trough and John the Baptist hiding in the hills. The book also claims that the author is James, Jesus' stepbrother. Biblical scholar Ronald Hock said the book emphasizes Mary being a pure virgin. Multiple times the book mentions how Mary could have easily lost her purity, but she goes above and beyond to keep it. God then chooses the purest of all the virgins in Israel to give birth to his son. And as we all know, that virgin was Mary. Number 1. The Ascension of Isaiah The Ascension of Isaiah reads like a storybook, and it can be divided into three main sections. Scholars have suggested each section was written separately, then the three were joined later into a single book. The first part of the Ascension is Isaiah predicting that King Manasseh will be an evil and ungodly king. Then, when Manasseh demands Isaiah to retract his prophecy, Isaiah flees into the wilderness but he's captured as he's trying to escape and is sawn in half. The second part is a long list of prophecies. The book goes on about the coming of Christ. It talks about how evil is going to seep into the world and infect the church. It's honestly a little eerie because the book dates to the origin of Christianity, yet it really hit the nail on the head with predicting the widespread evil that would permeate the Christian church. It's the final part of the ascension that makes it really seem like a storybook. Isaiah is taken on a grand tour of the heavenly realm. He's led through the seven ascending heavens by an angel, with all the splendors being described. Then Isaiah descends the heavens right behind Jesus as he makes his way toward the earth and his virgin birth. Isaiah floats down from heaven, seeing with his own eyes Jesus being beamed down into Mary's belly like an embryo transplant from an alien ship. The book concludes by saying Isaiah was cut in half because of what he saw in his prophecies. It was Satan who conspired to have Isaiah killed by Manasseh, so he couldn't reveal the birth of Jesus Christ. No part of this book was ever accepted into the official scripture. Many of the ideas do correspond to what was written in the Bible, but the flamboyancy bordered on heretical, causing the book to be labeled pseudepigrapha by the church. What do you think is the weirdest story from the Bible? Let us know what you think in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. 
Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.